plays for the FME UP Tux Young Guns and is the son of former Springbok coach Hanukkah Kamea. Vic, thank you for joining us. How are you? I'm great, thanks. Thank you for the opportunity. It's an absolute pleasure. Let's get right into it. You played for the Young Guns, who are doing exceptionally well. They're topping, they top the Northern Log at the moment. What is it like playing representative rugby for the other 20 team on your university? It's, I think it's a great opportunity first off, but um, since I can remember it was like a, a dream to play rugby professionally and uh, it's a great opportunity to play for the UP Young Guns and we've got a great squad of players as well. So I just you know, enjoy every moment of it and it's, it's a great experience. You are playing in the Varsity Cup, the Young Guns come to a certain side of it. Obviously you need to be studying. What are you studying? And what are your thoughts on professional rugby players pursuing degrees? I'm currently studying a BCom Human Resource Management and um, I think it's the most important thing you can do as a rugby player because your career can end tomorrow. I can like tear something tomorrow in practice and then I'm out for the rest of my career. So it's great to have a plan to fall back on. So I think it's probably the most important thing as a rugby player to, um, to start um, a study. You have mentioned before that uh You've, you've suffered injuries yourself. What is the worst injury you've, you've sustained and how did you get through it mentally? Um, in grade 11, I tore my um, ACL in my right knee and then I was out for about 10 months and then maybe the third game back, I had to go operate on the same knee again. So that's about two and a half years out from continuous rugby. So the mental aspect from that was incredibly tough. You, um, the injury road is a very lonely road and you're on your own so you have to adapt to that so um, you have to grow up mentally as I, if I can put it that way so you know you just have to maybe just suck it up give yourself a few weeks to just uh, feel sorry for yourself but after that you just got to work hard and you just got to have a good support base so um, very tough mentally but you can get through it yeah. Vic you finished school at Afi just across the road and there's no denying that Apis is a rugby factory in South Africa. I mean, you, you've you walked the same halls with, with, with players like Pierce Peace and Fury Dupree. What did Apis do for you for your rugby career? What did you learn from a school like that? I think Apis is probably the most important aspect regarding my life as a rugby player and um, the moral values I learned there and the team values I learned there. That I think Apis really built my character as well. So, Afi's, I would say, contributed to most of everything I've achieved so far. Um, it's a school I, I love very much and I think they, they really... Um, yeah, let's say if I went to a different school, I don't think my rugby would be on the level it is now. So I, I have a, with Afi's in a high regard and I, I love the school very much. Let's get into the nitty gritty of, of, of the interview. You are the son of former Springbok coach Heine Kamea. What was it like in, in the time that he was a coach? Uh, you know, you used to away for long periods of time, you couldn't necessarily be there for, for some of your matches. What was it like having a father that was coaching one of the best teams in the world? Um, first of all, I just think, you know, I'm, I'm greatly privileged to have a father like that, you know, who can also contribute to my rugby as well. But um, most part, I was very proud of him because it was his dream from, from you know, his playing days as well to, to coach the Springboks. So I was very glad for him and proud, proud of him. Um, you know, it's, it is tough when he's away, but uh, you, you give him that because, you know, it's a dream and uh, you give him that chance to pursue his dream. So everything that, all the negatives wasn't really that tough because um, I just knew it was his dream and um, I was just very proud of him and glad he got to pursue that opportunity. Knowing the man personally, I know your dad has a lot of, well, he has very high standards yeah. as a coach, as a father assisting his son as a rugby player. What was the greatest lesson that he gave you and how did he approach your rugby career? Um, he always told us, you know, you don't have to necessarily play rugby. He said you can be whatever you want to be. He never really pressured us to play rugby. I know my, my other brother doesn't even play rugby. He plays uh, hockey. So he's just, you know, he's a great motivator and he's a great father in that regard as well. So he always just told us the main lesson was to never give up and to pursue your dreams and to never compromise on your dreams. So I think that's a great lesson to be learned as well. So he never really pressured us into anything. He just always there as a supporting father and a supporting figure and he was just you know, always there for us as well. South Africans are incredibly hard 
supporters. I mean, when things do not go our way, we tend to, uh, you know, throw our toys off the cot. Having a dad that was the Springbok coach must have been tough when things were not going well for the Springboks. The World Cup being knocked out of the semi-finals, not, not winning any rugby championships during this time, beating the All Blacks only once. How did you deal with the pressure? Because obviously people would, you know, take your dad's mistakes and put it onto you, or your dad's faults, for lack of a better word. How did you deal with that? Um, obviously it is tough. Uh, you get people that say, um, say things that uh, have a lot of negative things and you read a lot of things in the newspapers and on Facebook and stuff like that. So it is tough to deal with that, but you also have to take it with a pinch of salt. But um, I think when you look at the, the, like the broader spectrum of things, um, yes, you, you, you read a lot of like, negative things, but when you go into communities and you go into places where I know media isn't that well, you know, I'm covered and those people don't really necessarily post things on Facebook and social media. The people there are incredible. And the things I've seen while um, being near my father and, and the squad and everything is absolutely incredible how those people carry those players and things on their hands. So I think for every negative person on Facebook or in the newspaper, there's a lot of other people who are incredibly supportive and um, still to this day comes up and says wonderful things and so it's it is tough but you know there is a lot of positive people as well and that just made it so much easier to cope with any negative comments and things like that going back to your rugby career Vic, what are your aspirations where do you see yourself going um obviously you want to play at the highest level and um i think where i am now is a, is a very great base for that and i think the bulls is a very good um, union to, to play and uh, the coaches here are world class and the people here are world class you get to play with world class players every day and the squad mentality here is a winning mentality and everybody here wants to wants to win and wants to win trophies so I think you know to get that mentality um, through the youngsters as well where, especially where I'm playing now um, everybody there wants to win trophies and to win just to win a match isn't good enough we want to win the whole thing so obviously you want to play at the highest level test level and um, yeah, it's just, you know, every practice player's dream to play for his country. As we end North Vic, if you had a special message for the next generation of players, what would you say to them? Um, I would just say what my father said to me, to so just never compromise on your dreams and uh, just to keep going. And I've had a lot, had a lot of setbacks, um, missing out on Craven Week twice because of injury, um, you know, things like that. So. Just have to keep on working. You have to never, like, like I said, never compromise on your dreams and just never give up. Vic Gamble Magazine would like to take this opportunity to thank you so much for spending some time with us. As we learn more about what it's like to have a father that's coached one of the best teams in the world, so thank you so much. We wish you all the best for your future endeavors. Thank you so much. It was a great privilege to be here. Thanks.